Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Matthew Garcia. I am with the Shevet Glaubach Center. I'm very happy to be working with our colleagues at Broadridge today. We have great representation here from Broadridge to discuss with you all uh, the topic of women in tech. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Emma Peck, our colleague at and friend at Broadridge so that she could talk about what the evening, what is in store this evening. So Emma, please take it away. Okay, fantastic. Um, thank you so much everyone for joining us. I'll try and speak slow because it seems like some people might still be joining. Um, but again, we are excited to be here. For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Emma Peck. I lead our early career recruitment team at Broadridge. So welcome to our Women in Technology panel event. We are thrilled to be here this evening. And of course, thank you to the Career Services team and Mira Shear for spearheading this event. Throughout the course of this evening session, you'll hear from three of our rock star panelists um, who are all representing different areas of broader technology. Before we begin our introductions, I'll just do a brief run through the agenda um, so you know what to expect and a little bit about who we are. So again, um, following my introduction, we'll go right into the panel event. Um, our Yeshiva alumni, Mira Shear, will be moderating the panel session. After the panel portion, we will definitely be making time for Q&A. So we hope that all of you will be you know, um, taking notes throughout the session if you have any follow-up questions that you want to ask, because we do want to keep it as um, interactive as possible. After our q and I will jump back on and share a little bit about our career opportunities at Broadridge for anyone that might be interested. And of course, you know, share a link to our career page and any of our different opportunities. At that point, um, the formal portion of the event will end, but we do have some alumni that um, are maybe planning on joining us. So we can um, keep the line open if anyone wants to do some networking there. So we hope that everyone will be able to stay on the line. So again, we are Broadridge. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about us. I spent a lot of the time, you know, before I had this, you know, at Yeshiva Career Fairs and then also doing virtual events. Um, but for those of you who don't know us, we are a global fintech leader. So we are a financial technology company for anyone that's not familiar with the term of fintech, which means that we're really straddling both sides of the business, you know, with our equal footings in technology and finance and business, which really makes us so unique and so um, fantastic because it does provide a lot of different opportunities for, you know, early career people that are graduating because we have so many different roles in different areas of the organization, which is really great to think about. Um, so one of the biggest things about Broadridge, while a lot of people you maybe haven't heard of us, sometimes will joke that we're the biggest company that you've never heard of. You have heard about our clients. Um, we work with some of the biggest names in the game. You know, about 98% of the banks and brokers work with Broadridge in one capacity or another. Um, and you will, a lot of our clients are going to be those larger banks and the mutual funds in the industry. So some of the bigger names out there. That's really how we like it. If we're doing our job well, you know, you might not hear about us because that means that everything is running smoothly. The goal of Broadridge is really to help our clients, some of the names that I just mentioned, get ahead of you know, any of the challenges um, in today's world in the financial services industry by helping provide them with different services and the technology to make their lives easier and to make their clients' lives easier in turn. You know, so we are working with our clients on the back end, you know, whether it's providing you know, the actual physical mailing um, and statements for their materials that they're sending to their shareholders, or maybe we're providing different tech services and different software for our clients. Um, so really the idea is that we are helping them transform their business in all these different areas. And again, you know, we have, we're a global company. Our headquarters are in the tri-state area. However, we do have offices as far away as Hyderabad, India, and as close as in New York City. You know, we've been running mostly virtual for this time being, but we are excited to kind of go back into a hybrid, you know, return to work. It's also really important to note that, you know, Broadridge actually, we stayed open during the pandemic. We were actually deemed an essential business. So we were able to continue to keep our business running and help serve our clients um, all across the nation and the globe, which was really important to us. Um, and something to keep in mind, you know, when it comes to the Broadridge culture, you know, because outside of just all the different great work that we're doing on the business side, it's 
important to keep that in mind as well. Um, I always like to talk about internal mobility. That's something that's really important to me here at Broadridge. And I think it's something that you'll hear about, you know, from any of our panelists, just about how important the culture is at Broadridge and how we really do emphasize, you know, um, the importance of, you know, making sure our employees are happy and fulfilled in their careers. You know, for me personally, um, I love doing events like this. This is really, you know, kind of where I get my energy. Um, so again, excited to be here with all of you. So now I will just introduce all of our panelists for this evening. Um, so we have Jocelyn Chen, our Vice President of Applications Development speaking with us. Keely Dyack, Senior Director, Software Engineering. Michelle Minnelli, Vice President of Quality Assurance. And Mira Shear, our Software Engineer. So thank you all. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Mira. Thanks, Emma. So we are going to kick off the panel with a question to the audience and you can just post it in the chat. Everyone's gonna see your answers. Um, but let's start with what inspired you to seek out a tech focused degree? And I'm gonna give you options. Uh, a, a desire to innovate. B, a love for technology. C, a mentor or role model. Or D, a prospective career in technology. And I can repeat those options. So what inspired you to seek out a tech focused degree? A, a desire to innovate, B, a love for technology, C, a mentor or role model, or D, a prospective career in technology. We got an A with an exclamation point. That's an emphasis A. A desire to innovate, also seeing a love for technology. You can see how those go hand in hand. Yeah, that's that that's that's our answer is either a love for technology or a desire to innovate. Oh nope, I'm so sorry. We have a D, prospective career in technology. Great. Sounds like people went in for different reasons, and it's good that tech is so broad and diverse <laughs> on what you can do with it. Um, so let's get started with we're gonna ask our first question to Gislaine. What was expected of you for your first job and how did you transition from a college student to a professional? Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just glad to be here today and, and, and have you all participate. And it's always great to see women, you know, be excited about tech. So uh, for me, I was expecting my first job. Um, background, prior to my first job after I graduated, the only work experience that I had was working like summer jobs. So I worked at coffee shops or I actually worked at Blockbuster. I know, uh, if you know what Blockbuster is, is prior to Netflix days. And so when I worked at um, my first job, it was it was actually a, a data file. Data file was a small company before we got acquired. So um, I found that obviously work was very different than school, but for me, I actually enjoyed working a lot more than school because that was when things became real. Um, I remember like in school assignments, you know, it, it's not that I didn't take them seriously. Obviously they're very important, but when you start working and you realize, oh my goodness, this, these are like real clients that I'm dealing with. This is data that can matter. If I'm off by the penny, it can make an impact to, you know, grandma's bank account and all that, right? So I actually found that um, accountability was very important and just naturally I, I, I cared a lot more. Um, and I think that, you know, one of the things that I'm sure all of you are, are very responsible is that um, being able to kind of handle dates and time management as you start to work is going to be one of those critical things. Um, it, when you're also when you're first kind of working into the real world, it might feel kind of really big, you know, there's a lot going on and all that, but don't be afraid to ask questions. I think this is the opportunity for you to kind of leverage a lot of the senior support that's gonna be made available for you. Uh, fortunately, when I first started working, um, actually one of my first jobs was at Broadridge. So as I would say, I worked for a company called Datafile. We got acquired by ADP that eventually spun up to Broadridge. So I've actually worked for like three different legal entities, but they've all been part of Broadridge. Um, so anyway, going back, I, I find that learning the business is also really important. So if you want to be able to try and understand, you know, what do your clients do? 
Um, how do they use the application? You know, try to figure out the process and then realizing those kind of things, being accountable, having a good relationship with your manager also really helps because all too often, if you've been in software, you realize that dates sometimes will, will shift. And it's sometimes to no, not really your fault because you, as you start to unveil the cover of looking at code, um, you might realize, oh my goodness, it's a lot more complicated than it really is. Um, what sometimes people will estimate will take maybe a couple of weeks will turn out to be like a six month project. And I think part of the process is actually being able to find those answers early on, especially when you're not experienced, and then bringing people that are senior to you that can kind of support, you know, and validate those thoughts that you might have um, that's going to help you along. And as long as you kind of communicate that, um, you know, we can change dates. Uh, it, sometimes it is difficult to kind of communicate that with clients, or sometimes we can add more resources to make sure that we still deliver on time. But um, I have found that that was one of the largest transition for me from kind of working, you know, independently where things mattered more based on, you know, just impacted only myself. But when I started working at Broadridge, uh, things that I worked on impacted a lot more people. And for me, um, I found that really important. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed that, like just being able to work on projects that were impactful to kind of real world people. Great. Thank you, Jislaine. Um, we're going to go over to Keely. How did you get started in tech? Thanks, Mira. I appreciate it. Um, actually, the the funny thing is I went to college to be an accountant. And I loved numbers. I loved science. I loved absolutely everything about it. But, okay, I'm going to date myself. I didn't really have exposure to anything computer-wise until I went to college. So, um, it, probably about two years into my in, into my education, I started taking computer classes as electives and I loved it. I instantly loved it. So I was very fortunate whenever I was in college that I, I had an internship. So um, that internship led me to learn more um, through on, on hands or on the job, uh, hands-on coding, and I just fell in love. So that was instantly where I wanted to be, was just doing the software engineering, going through and creating something out of just a bunch of words. So that was definitely one of the, one of the reasons why I got started in tech was just exposure um, and the, the love of just, you know, math and science in general, and having that opportunity to do that internship at, um, it's actually at a company called US Steel. Uh, so it was, it was a great opportunity for me and they hired me full time after my internship. So um, definitely something that one of the reasons why I had gone into technology. I was originally going to try to be a veterinarian and that just, I didn't, I got too emotionally attached to everything. So I just couldn't do it. Um, numbers and science numbers and um, doing coding and things that it, it just, I didn't, I wasn't emotionally attached to the thing that it present it um, finalized in. So it was definitely, um, it, it was, it was interesting. So you start off in one career when, when you start school and then you totally shift. So that's how I started. Great. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to Michelle. How much of your learning has been on the job versus a formal degree or a training program? Hi there. Um, so I have a computer science um, degree. So when I went to school, I learned how to code. So, and I'm definitely going to date myself here because I had COBOL cards, you know, and I was doing assembler and I was doing all those languages. My first job out of school was for a startup telecom company. And part of my role was to write small scripts about how we would track who was actually uh, making phone calls was for a hotel we were selling our product to. And, you know, how many phone calls were being made, how, how long was the, the call, how much we would charge, you know, for that call. So it was a little bit of math, you know, understand it, but it was interesting because you know, that was something that had never been done. And in school, I learned, you know, what are the syntax, you know, how to write the right um, script, you know, what to do, how to troubleshoot the problem and things like that. So in school, you kind of learn 
the, the conceptual of like what it is you need to do. But once you're in the job, you're going to take that and move forward with it. You're going to, you know, understand, oh, well, that's how I wrote that there. You know, you can go back and look at some of the scripts you wrote, you know, but as you delve into what you're doing in, in the job, you're going to have other folks that are going to help to mentor you on that. But those scripts that you're going to write are going to build upon, they're going to expand upon, you know, and the things that you learn there. So one of the things, you know, that I realized as I I was writing these scripts and troubleshooting. The best part of it for me was actually finding why the, the code didn't work, why the job failed. You know, why is it that, you know, when I wrote that syntax and I started playing around like, oh, if I did that, it would fail. If I did that, it would fail. So I was enjoying that part of the job more than actually writing it to make it work. Um, you know, so I started moving into that. And, um, you know, so for me, the formal training was really good, but for me, for on-the-job training, because now I manage a set of um, testers, software engineers, who do, you know, who validate whether or not the, the code is working or not. So one of my one of my junior folks come and said, all right, let's look at the code. Let's understand where it is. And they're like, no, 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 you can't look at them. I guess we can, you know. And so when I talked to the research, I said, you know, let's do our own research first. Let's take away, you know, what's there. Take away the mystery of it. We're all computer science, you know, degrees, you know, for the most part on my team. So I said, you have that background. Let's go and do that. So it's a little of both. So you start with the foundation of what you learn in school, but take that and expand up on it, you know, and, and really kind of like understand, like, you know, so like Keely said, she start, wanted to be an accountant. It's like, I wanted to be a coder, you know, as I went on in my career, it was probably like three, four years in, I was like, oh, I really don't want to do this. I want to be more on the testing, you know, realm of this, and, you know, so go and take what you've learned. You're going to expand. Technology is a whole large world out there now, way different from when I probably started out, you know, so um, as, as you ladies, you know, move into this, like really focus on what is it you enjoy about your job? You know, there are going to be pieces of it that you're going to do. Explore, be willing to take that risk. Ask someone about, you know, you know, how are you doing that? You know, why is it that you do it that way? You know, really explore until you find exactly what you want. Thank you. We're now going to talk a little bit about networking. Uh, so let's go back to Ghislaine. What part did networking play in your career success? Yeah, so I think networking, uh, what I initially think about it, I think of like peer networking, like making contacts, you know, sideways. But it's 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 not just networking sideways. It's not, like it's managing up and it's managing down. And for me personally, uh, I've been in, involved in some kind of cross-business leadership programs. Actually, that's where I met Michelle before. And uh, those kind of programs have added a tremendous amount of value to my personal and career development because that's where I really learned how to collaborate with people kind of outside of my day-to-day -day projects. Um, and at the same time, it also creates this reputation and, and you build credibility where you're somebody that, you know, that people, other people can collaborate with um, and people want to work for or work with. Uh, quite often, opportunities come your way because somebody knows of you, has worked with you, and may come and tap you on the shoulder and say, you know, I really enjoyed working with Shazlan. I, I like how she asked questions. I like how she kind of brought everyone together. Um, I really think that this other opportunity be other opportunity would be great for her. So I think that's how networking has really kind of created a lot of opportunities. Um, in my actually existing role as a, a VP of, of software engineering, I was able to also get visibility in front of senior leaders because of a stretch project. So because of the stretch project, which in my opinion was a networking kind of opportunity, that really gave me that visibility that I needed to kind of showcase my talents, um, to senior management that I normally wouldn't have the opportunity to do. So um, the other benefit of networking, I also think, is you're going to run into a lot of challenges in your career, um, you know, technical challenges, maybe personal challenges and all that. And um, I, I mean, when I think back about my career, a lot of times I felt a little bit alone and isolated. But what I realized a lot later in my career is that through my network, I'm not alone. Um, you know, there are times you're gonna be able to kind of reach out to somebody that's maybe in a similar situation that's maybe gone through the challenge 
and you can kind of ask them, how did you get, get through this challenge? Or, um, or if you were in my situation, you know, what would you do? And I think it just helps a lot to have kind of that sounding board. So, um, you know, networks are, you know, it doesn't have to be like grand, but I think that it really can help you a lot in your career. Thank you. That's that's actually how I met you, Gisling, <laughs> through yeah, networking. Right. Uh, so we're going to ask Michelle the same question. What part did networking play in your career success? I think overall, you know, definitely um, a significant amount, you know, and I see it you know, a lot of folks here that I actually met through, um, you know, a lot of the networking and affinity groups that we have. When I first started out with my career, you know, um, and maybe folks don't, wouldn't think that, but I'm, I'm an introvert. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when, when, especially when you first started out working, you know, and, and you're the new person there and, and you walk into a room, especially with technology and you're really the, you look around and you're probably the only woman sitting at the table. You know, and, and you start to wonder, okay, you know, how do how do I get my voice, you know, heard? But you know, as part of it, um, a lot of the companies, and they know we do it here, you know, at Broadridge, is that as soon as we we have a new hire, we actually pair uh, our new hires up with a buddy, you know, or someone that they can go to. If you have that opportunity at any company, make sure you connect with them. You know, because usually those individuals are really the folks who are going to help you to navigate. Those are going to be whether they're coaches or your mentors, right? So as part of networking, you're going to find mentors, you're going to find coaches. So your mentors are the folks that you can talk to. You can say, you know, hey, you know, I'm having this problem. How do I do this? You know, who do I talk to? What do I navigate? You know, really connect with those. And then you're going to have your coaches. And your coaches could be your managers. It could be someone even, you know, in a different department, you know, so and you're going to be able to, you know, kind of identify those over time. But for me, with networking and be able to identify who those could be. So when I first started out um, at Broadridge, I was assigned to someone and I still talk to her today. You know, like whenever I have a question, I'm like, OK, you know, like I have this question, like, who do I talk to? And, and you know, she'll help me. We have affinity groups. We have our women leadership teams, you know, that I've met like wonderful people there. We've got, um, you know, some of the training and networking things that we're doing. Those are all opportunities for you to like, you know, network and really, you know, kind of like have that person that can, um, you know, that can help you, that you can pick up a phone call, you know, or text them or, or get that information. The other thing that's really, really important is if your manager does not schedule a regular one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, take the initiative and do that. You know, schedule that meeting with them because that's also an opportunity for your manager to eventually become a co you know, become your coach, become someone's going to advocate for you. And then look across your business unit or is there someone in the business team, you know, that you interact with day in, day night, you know, over and over, schedule a regular meeting with them. That's part of your networking, you know, and you're going to talk about a project, you're going to talk about different things, you know, because as, as a lot of like some of the other executive leaderships look across the organization, they're going to look to say, okay, I've spoken to this, you know, and like, she's always have that answer. She always has that, that, um, you know, that new idea, or she's always doing that. That's part of networking and how to do that. So, you know, it's very important. Sometimes, you know, as an introvert, like I had to learn that over time, but, you know, being part of that, I had a really great mentor, you know, and she really helped me, you know, when I first started out with my career, and she gave me a lot of these advice, you know, and I've taken it to all the companies that, that I've been at, and they try to do the same, you know, for, um, for the folks who work for me, too. Thank great. you. Thank you. Uh, so for the last section of the panel questions, before we'll go into Q&A, we're going to talk specifically about women in technology. And we'll start with Keely. How do you balance your work and everyday life? Well, with the pandemic, it's definitely been a challenge because everybody's remote. So um, my office is in my basement. <laughs> So um, I have two kids and uh, just adopted a puppy last week, like everybody else in um, the pandemic, it feels like. So uh, it, it is it, it is a little bit of a challenge. Um, I, I will say that the time spent um, at work, you feel like it's more flexible, but you feel like you're spending more time with work. Um, 
my team is phenomenal that I, that I work with. So uh, the you know being available for them and and being available for my family and just to be able to actually now be actually able to do things outside of the house um, is is definitely something that has been a challenge. But just some advice there is you you have to know when to to just walk away for a little bit um, to keep time for yourself and to have personal time. It's hard when your office is in your home um, and everybody's remote and uh, the availability, like I, I, I do have teams up. There's no, there's no noises happening, but um, it, it's a constant. So if, um, if somebody knows you're around, they, they message you, but uh, that, just know when to walk away. Know that tomorrow it's going, the work is going to be there tomorrow. If you need to step away for a little bit and um, do something later, or if you have appointments or things like that, um, it, it's okay to do that. So it, it's okay to take time for yourself, for your family, for your friends, um, for your dog uh, <laughs> to be able to go through and uh, just make sure that you're taking care of yourself. I, I can't stress enough because I know that I've had um, challenges myself as well is just the the mental health aspect of it and making sure that you're taking care of yourself whenever you have um, so much in a day that you're spending in front of the computer, that you're spending a time with work. Um, Broadridge is great with that. They really emphasize the, um, the taking time for yourself and making sure that you are um, taking care of yourself. Uh, that, that is definitely something that um, has been uh, a challenge. Um, take help when you can. My husband is awesome. Um, <laughs> he definitely helps me out uh, with with kids and dinner and and whatever else whenever he can. Um, but we we switch off a lot. Um, so just ask for help when you need it too. So that's definitely something to to make sure when you're when you're trying to balance work and everyday life, you can't do it all. Um, I know a lot of times women feel like they have to do it and they have to do everything, but understand that there is help out there. If it's a friend, if it's um, a coworker listening to you, just to just to vent for a little bit to understand your challenges that you face um, personally. If it's just you know having to run out with your your kids, a lot of you may or may not have kids, so I, I would assume most do not. But that's probably a bad assumption. Um, but if you don't, you need to take the time and spend with your friends and be able to just take a break away. So that's definitely something to 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 stress there so um just understanding when to when to move and when to take that those breaks and take the time for yourself and not just be all consumed in um your your work world that's definitely something that i would uh say is is a good thing to keep in mind thank you and we'll go back to michelle how have you overcome the obstacles that you have faced as a woman in technology? Okay, so, um, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, sometimes you walk into a room and you really are really the only woman in that room, you know, and, you know, the first couple of times you kind of get a little self-conscious about it, but after a while it's, it just becomes, you know, really just part of, part of your DNA and you walk in there. But one of the things that I think, you know, that's helped me is like, be prepared. You know, when you walk into that room or when you turn on that camera, make sure you have everything. You know, I, I write everything down, you know, I ask myself questions that I think someone's going to ask. So, you know, I kind of get ready, you know, for those answers always leave with the facts, be willing to say, look, I don't know that answer, but I'm going to get back to it. You know, because one of the things, you know, that um, as women, sometimes we get a little bit of a stereotype, like, well, they really don't know, you know, what that is, you know, th they're just there. But if you come in, you know, with, with all your facts, be willing to speak up, raise your hand, ask a question, you know, and say, I don't understand that. Or I thought you said that the last time, you know, and, you know, try and get some clarification on that, because that becomes, part of you being part of the conversation, you start getting engaged in the conversation, you know, and everyone starts, you know, talking to you. One of the things that I had from um, a 
mentor coach, um, you know, person, he says, don't take it personally. If they ignore you, it's, it's not that they're ignoring you because, you know, you're there, you know, or a woman, it just means that you're not speaking up, you know, and he used to tell me, speak up, ask that question, you know, lean in, be part of that conversation, you know, walk in, say hello, you know, don't just walk in and go sit at the back of the room, walk in and go sit at the table, you know, and don't sit at the end of the table, sit up front of the table, you know, so that, you know, feet, you know they know who you are. And also accept credit when, when someone tells you you've done a good job, say thank you. You know, like sometimes as women, we're like, okay, you know, like, yeah, we know we did a good job. We don't want to like, but it's okay to celebrate that win and say thank you. There are a couple of times he used to send me, oh, you know, you did a great job. I'm like, yeah, so-and-so. He's like, stop. He's like, that was you. You might have been leading the team, but, you know, accept the credit. You know, so those are some of the things, you know, like be yourself, you know, be be who you are in front of your team, be who you are in front of, you know, the others and, you know, just be yourself, you know, and always lead with the facts and be also okay to say, hey, I, I don't know this answer, but go find out and come back. You know, when you come back with the answer, then it also shows that you've done your homework, you've done everything you're prepared, you know, to do this job. Great, thank you. We'll go back to Ghislaine. Uh, what are some interesting projects that you have worked on or are currently working on? Sure. Um, so I think one of the highlights of my career, which I kind of briefly mentioned before, was um, when I had an, uh, the opportunity to work on the stretch project. So I was able to put together um, like a business case to suggest how might we modernize our trading application. So um, if you're into investing, uh, you know, maybe you've heard of like the game stuff. GameStop and you know the trading and all those applications out there. We have a trading platform uh, within Broadridge. Um, it's very reliable, really, really stable. But sometimes you know we need to kind of evaluate how to modernize it. Um, so I was able to put together a, a business case, and and that was actually the opportunity where. I was able to be visible in front of senior leadership and they, they saw my competencies and then they gave me more opportunities. So I really enjoyed working on that and putting together you know, a solution where it made sense from a financial perspective and also from a technical perspective. Um, so that was you know, a few years ago. The current project that I'm kind of working on right now, um, as Emma was talking about in the introduction, you know, Broadridge is a really large organization. Um, we're, you know, a, a lot of what we do, actually, we, we acquire a lot of other businesses that we feel are a good fit into kind of our portfolio of products. So uh, in the last couple of years, we acquired um, a big company uh, in Canada. I'm actually from Canada. And um, with all of the different products that we have at Broadridge, uh, I, I've been looking at how do I kind of integrate some of the pr different products and applications together. So that's been really interesting to look at it from a um, you know different lens and looking at it from a big big picture perspective, right? Like as, as a bank, you might have all these different platforms in the background that are ready, you know, a trading platform, a portfolio platform, maybe something that does taxes. And there are all these kind of desperate systems, you know, in, in different places. And, you know, maybe when you're revealing stuff, um, you know, it, it's actually very complex. So uh, what I'm trying to do is how do I simplify, put together a proposal in terms of how do we put all of those products that we have at Broadridge into a solution that makes it into um, the best user experience. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's it's the advisors, investment advisors, or it's the bankers or people in operations that are using our applications, like real people that are using these applications and you want to make um, a positive experience for them. So it's been really interesting trying to, you know, learn all the different products and then make suggestions on like what would be the best fit in terms of future capability for the next gen and and sometimes it's a bit tough because i mean you know I, I think there are some systems that have been around for a while and then we're building also a lot of new applications right but um you know you have to manage kind of like the risk um the upside the benefits of building new and all those things so it's, it's been interesting in, in trying to put that together. Great, thank you. 
Um, now we'll ask the same question to Keely. What are some interesting projects that you have worked on or are currently working on? Sure. The um, One of the big ones that I had worked on early on in my career when I was a software engineer was an accounting system, surprisingly, since I went to school for accounting. Um, but the uh, I had the opportunity to create a, a, an accounting system from the ground up. So um, I was able to work directly with the accounting department, create that system, maintain it, enhance it, um, and do everything with it. And that was several years of my life. Um, but the, the cool thing about it, uh, even though it's on a very old technology, it's on Power Builder, which I'm sure nobody's heard of. So um, but it's a very old technology. Um, but at the time, it was one of the, um, it, it was an upcoming technology. And uh, what was cool about it or what is cool about it is it's still used today. So um, it's it's something that was self-sufficient, self-reliant, and um, it was built in a manner that uh, there wasn't a lot of maintenance needed on it. So um, I still get random phone calls of people just saying, hey, you know, remember this and this system? And it's so weird that it was done, I, honestly, 20 years ago um, is when I created this system and uh, they're still using it. They still call me every once in a while for questions, but that system is being used by a large company. So um, it, it's, it's pretty cool to know that it's still kind of hanging around out there. Um, so that's early days of my career. Uh, now kind of fast forward really um, into my Broadridge uh, it, area is I had the opportunity to um, work or pardon me, to be a part of a project within our talent acceleration program. And the cool thing was it's uh, it brings a bunch of different people together from different areas within the business, not just technology. You have different people from the business and whatnot that are working together. And I was very fortunate that I got to research a little bit about artificial intelligence and machine learning in the wealth management space. So um, that part that project was just really interesting for us to be able to go through and to provide suggestions on where to go, um, what we needed to do to move the project forward with a team. They're still going through, there's many articles that Broadridge has done, um, and there's a lot of AI uh, just conversations in the wealth management space, what we do for the user experience, the front end. Um, so that that's definitely something that was really interesting to get to be a part of, to provide suggestions and to actually see some of that continue to move forward in the research that we had conducted. So definitely, um, that was that that was a pretty cool project, and and I got exposure to a lot of people. So as was stated earlier, networking is a huge part of your career, and that really helped because now I know other areas within Broadridge and other people within Broadridge, and um, as actually one of the reasons why I'm part of this panel is is having that opportunity to um, work with people and and be connected with others uh, through those uh, programs that Broadridge offers. Great, thank you. So we are gonna jump to Q&A after one more question. Uh, we wanna keep plenty of time for Q&A, so just maybe one minute from everybody. Uh, we'll start with Michelle, but what advice would you give to women entering the tech field today? So the one advice, um, probably several things, but I think, you know, one of one of the advice is, um, you know, be be okay, be be okay to fail, right? Because you might you might fail the first time out, you know, and, and fail, and, and not that you fail in your career, but you might do something that you know is not necessarily the result that you were looking for, you might be right in a program and, you know, some, the, the program doesn't, you know, go all the way through. If you're on the, um, 
on like an AI or, you know, go into like cyber technology or something like that, you know, th those are all different things, but it's okay. But the one thing to always learn and remember is that that failure is not really a failure. It's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to learn something else. It's an opportunity to, to understand how you're going to recover for that, you know, and, and also be willing to ask for help, you know, Everyone out there, you know, the person right next to you is probably having the same doubt, the same question. It's okay to ask for help, you know, and I can tell you the minute you ask for help, there's so many people out there that are absolutely going to be like, oh, I want to help you. I want to help you. And that's how also you find your network, you know, who's going to be your person, you know, that person you can always reach out to. So it, it's okay to fail, just but use that as a learning opportunity. Great, thank you. And Ghislaine, the same question. What advice would you give to women today entering the tech field? Yeah, um, so I would say like relationships matter. So it's back on the theme of networking, right? Because I, I think that as it was kind of already discussed, it might feel like you're the only woman sometimes in the room or you might be the only woman on the team, um, but chances are, you know, there's other people that are feeling that way too. So somehow like find those other women in the organization and build relationships. Um, I, I think it's just really helpful to have people that are kind of on your advisory board is what I would call it. Cause you know, maybe somebody like you just have challenges with people on your team and you wanna find somebody that's unbiased. So um, just being able to kind of find friends and also like enjoy, enjoy the journey, right? Like there's just gonna be some challenges, but like it's so much better when you're, you know, when you have friends uh, at work that you can like laugh with, enjoy your time with, go to lunch with. Um, it's just so much better when you're gonna have relationships um, and that you can kind of look back on. Thank you. And last one, uh, Keely, same question. What advice would you give to women entering the tech field today? Um, I would definitely give the advice of make sure that you don't get overwhelmed, but do research whenever you're looking at things. Things are not going to be handed to you, um, man or woman, <laughs> really, truly in that in that capacity. Uh, but I, I definitely feel sometimes I feel that women have to prove themselves a little bit more um, that you are knowledgeable. I think Michelle had kind of said that a little bit earlier as well, that um, it, it's definitely I think women often get underestimated um, in their ability to comprehend some of the concepts, especially in a technical role. Um, so you don't have to you don't have to try too hard, but you definitely just want to make sure that you're 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 showing you can you can hold your ground with everybody no matter who it is, no matter who is addressing you, but definitely come educated and prepared to conversations. That is definitely something that I would say, don't go in with an emotion, but go in with facts and understanding what um, what the conversation is about. I have to use that same advice on myself. So I tend to be an emotional person. So it's definitely something that I try to um, uh, uh, calm my emotions whenever I'm in a conversation with others uh, so that they can they can see that I am well-educated. I understand what, uh, what the issue is at hand and it can come with uh, facts and be able to provide um, just a solution instead of just expecting something to be handed to me. Great, thank you. Uh, we would like to open up a Q&A for any student who wants to ask the question of our panelists. You can post it in the chat. Um, you could unmute yourself, raise your hand if you really want to be daring, um, or you could also just message it to me and I will not say your name um, and I will just ask your question. And if nobody has questions, I'm gonna keep asking questions, but that's less interesting for the students. <laughs> so we'll give a minute to see who's gonna be really bold.
But in the meantime, let's see, let's start with a fun one. Um, okay, growing up, what did you want to be? I am sure we can start with Keely. You're currently up. Um, I don't know if a seven year old wanted to be an accountant. Maybe that's true. Nope. All right. So growing up, what did you want to be? <laughs> I wanted to be a veterinarian from the beginning. So that was definitely, I loved animals and I did an internship in high school at a vet and we had to put a cat to sleep and that was it for me. I could not deal with it. I just couldn't do it. And they said, you have to, you have to learn this part of the job too. And I said, no, nope, I'm done. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> Perfect. Good example. Uh, Michelle, what did you want to be growing up? Growing up, I actually wanted to be a teacher. You know, I, I enjoyed, um, you know, teaching. You know, I, I would always be like the teacher helper, you know, passing out all the things, you know, collecting all the, um, the paper, um, you know. So growing up, I, I really wanted to be a teacher. As I got older, you know, and my uncle at the time was an accountant, and he's like, ah, you don't want to be a teacher. You know, try, you know, go and do this, go and do that, you know, um, you know, but I still think that I do some kind of teaching in my role, you know, whether, you know, I'm teaching, you know, a new associate, how to use the system, how to do the different things, but I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and then halfway through um, that, I said, well, maybe I could be a party planner. And my mother's like, absolutely not. <laughs> She's like, you're not going to school to be a party planner. You, if you go to school, you're going to do something, you know, with, with your life. So, um, and, you know, I actually enjoyed, um, you know, computers and, you know, understanding how to do that. So that's why I ended up. Thank you. And Blaine? I think um, when I was younger, I wanted to be like in high school, I guess I wanted to be an architect. Like I really liked art, creating. I loved looking at buildings. Then Early on in university, I actually went into sciences and I wanted to be a doctor. Um, but then I guess similar to Kili, I realized, I don't know if I can handle like deaths or bad news. Um, so I was like, what's the alternative? Oh, you know, I'm good at math and went into programming and enjoyed that. And here I am today. The lesson here is that it's okay to change your mind. <laughs> um, we have a question. So other than coding, what are some positions that make an impact with tech at Broadridge? So I guess besides being a basic developer, a software engineer, but what are some other technical fields in Broadridge? If anyone wants to take the question. So, uh, I mean, I, I can start um, with that. So within our technology organizations, you know, there, there are different roles. Um, I, I head up, uh, I'm the vice president of the quality engineering team. And, you know, so that's traditionally not a coding role. That's really more about, you know, how does the product work? You know, where are the processes? You know, how do we put more processes or efficiencies and process improvements in there? You know, it, so it's really looking at, the, um, the usability of the product, how does it, how does, how do you use it, and whether or not the way that it was coded or created, you know, um, works. We also have, you know, what we call IT project managers, you know, so those are the individuals who are going to manage the projects, you know, so it's traditionally really a PM role, but it's, it's a technical PM role because you have to kind of understand the technology and the life cycle of um, software within that team. Yeah, I was gonna. I was going to say about the project management side of it. Definitely, um, an area that is is much is very much needed <laughs> um, throughout the throughout a project because um, there are so many moving parts. Understanding a software development life cycle can be overwhelming at times, um, and that that's definitely. Not everyone in the different um, disciplines, like you have software engineers, you have um, quality engineers, you you have business analysts, um, you even have product owners and whatnot. So just managing all the roles, managing the expectations for and making sure that you're delivering a project or a product is, is definitely something that is um, 
it's an area within IT that is, uh, you, you have to have a unique skill set for that. Um, and it, that's definitely something that I think anybody can benefit from. So I went from the software engineering more towards project management side of the house. Um, just, uh, you know, the, the, the sheer number of uh, projects and products and, and people that you manage uh, working through as some of the project managers, it's definitely, it, it's definitely interesting. Um, and there are a lot of certifications for uh, project managers and, and whatnot. If you don't want to do hands-on coding, you also have the infrastructure side of the house as well. So that's um, uh, more like networking and, and things like that that you can do that's not hands-on coding. Follow-up on this, um, Suzanne, if you want to uh, answer here on the follow-up, um, what are some of the skills that are needed for these other roles, such as being a PM, besides the tech skills? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> definitely, I think soft skills uh, are helpful. And um, I think I had alluded to before, uh, learning the business. So really, if you try to understand how your clients or leveraging, you know, the applications. Like, what are they dealing with? What are the regulations that they have? To, restrictions that they have. Um, basically, what what are their problems and what are their challenges? And how do our applications? How do our solutions help them so that you're helping them run their business better? So um, having that kind of thinking really helps you to be in a better position. Um, I also wanted to add like to the previous one, like the other roles that exist within Broadridge, the one that came to, to mind that was mentioned is product management. Um, product, I, I know a lot of product managers that actually have started off in a software engineering role. And because they understand how um, software is built, the intricacies of it, um, thinking about high availability, security, um, j just all the many things that you have to think about when you're building kind of an enterprise level, you know, application. Um, they are much more successful in a product management role when they have that background uh, in technology. Um, actually, our general manager in Canada, um, she was in she she was in a sales kind of role, but her foundation was software engineering, so that really helps. Um, so back to the original question in terms of skill, uh, I, I think that like obviously having the hard skills, you know, like knowing how to program code, problem solve, but those soft skills of being able to also like ask questions um, in a way, you know, like in an effective way is, is useful too. And a lot of times when you're a product manager, you might have to chase down people with like deliverables and all that. So being able to do it in a way where uh, people are more likely to respond and where you have kind of better influence is helpful too. So sometimes uh, it's helpful to kind of have those soft skills and knowing when to ask for what you need in order to be able to uh, do your job effectively. Thank you. And I think building on that also, most times as a project manager, the folks that you're trying to follow up with, they don't report to you. So they really don't have to, you know, answer to you. So to have that soft skill to be able to ask that question and get someone to respond to you is really, really important, you know, and to do it in a way that um, others don't think you're more of a nag, you know, but you're part of the collaboration, part of the team, you know, on how to do that. So those soft skills are, you know, extremely important. Great, thank you. Uh, we wanna send it back to Emma just for the last couple minutes uh, so we can hear about some potential job postings at Broadridge, considering you're all students <laughs> and are looking for jobs. Okay, fantastic. Um, well, again, thank you, everyone. That was so great and very interesting. Um, so to go into our career opportunities, so the first um, item I'll discuss is our internship program. Um, Broadridge offers a 10-week um, summer internship program across all different areas of our organization. Um, you know, for our enterprise um, intern program, all of our interns work on a capstone project, and that's something where you'll get a chance to work on a larger group project, you know, with some of the other 
members of the business. Um, and these are on different kind of use cases or you know, business studies. We try and think of something that's kind of top of mind at the moment. Some examples from this past summer, we had a group that discussed um, cryptocurrency. Another group did something on cloud technology. Another group did um, wealth management um, and Gen Z and how they're investing. Um, so for within our intern program and the different opportunities, we do have opportunities in technology. And these are in, you know, kind of the traditional software development and coding. We also have opportunities, you know, within quality engineering and some roles within project management and products. So a lot of the different areas that we kind of touched upon. Um, the application is live now on our website and the deadline is November 12th. Um, I'm just going to post the link to that in the chat. And then, um, so again, that's for our intern program. So to be eligible for our intern program, it's open to sophomores and juniors. Um, so as long as you're going back to school and you're um, in the fall, um, it is more competitive for sophomores, but it's definitely still um, available. We haven't made our official determination if we're going to be in person or virtual um, or potentially hybrid. We had a virtual program the past two summers and it's, it was great. Um, it was kind of an equalizer in a way. So that decision is probably forthcoming in January. And then for our full time opportunities outside, we have direct hire roles across all different areas of the organization. We've been doing a lot of hiring, you know, this year, especially in the early career space, um, more so than I've seen in, you know, the, my past few years, which is really exciting. Um, you know, I think it's an exciting place to be. So um, for any of our direct hire opportunities, you know, those might be, so if anyone on the call is maybe graduating in December, um, you know, definitely reach out to me. We have a lot of opportunities that are kind of in the pipeline, and I'll also pop my email into the chat. So for that's for anyone that might be graduating in December. And then we also have a rotational program. Um, our, this is a good opportunity for anyone, you know, for technology and non-tech students, because you get an exposure to different areas of the organization. Um, I, Mira was a graduate of that program, and I see that Shira's on the line. She's currently, um, and I think Mira was on as well. Um, they're both, you know, currently going through our Career Foundations program. So again, this is a rotational program where you spend about a year rotating through different areas of the organization. After that point, you will be placed into one of our um, different areas. So that could be in one of our technology areas or within some of our different business areas. So that's called our Career Foundations Program. Um, and then again, so that's a full-time opportunity. So I'm going to post the link to that um, into the chat as well. Emma, we got a quick question on if full-time positions are remote. So, um, so right now, um, for the Career Foundations program, they are all currently remote. However, I do anticipate that we'll kind of move into a hybrid approach. You know, that's um, where Broderidge is really looking to be, and that will be after January. Um, but for some of our different full-time opportunities, you know, every role is a little bit different. You know, some of our teams are kind of moving fully remote, um, but, you know, we're kind of looking into a hybrid aspect. So, you know, I don't foresee anyone needing to come into the office every day. Um, if someone's coming into the office, you really want to make it worthwhile for more of like a collaborative session, so to speak. Always a good question. Um, so I am going to, so again, my name is Emma Peck, and I, if anyone has any kind of follow-up questions about our career opportunities, I'm going to pop my email into the chat. Um, you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. And again, um, applications are live until November 12th um, for our intern and rotational program. Um, and then, you know, for any of our other direct hire roles, you know, those are kind of ongoing and all available on our career page. And I have an open internship for this summer. So if anybody wants to apply, feel free. <laughs> Perfect timing. I love the I was class, just going to say the same. I have an opening for an interim too. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm because I got a lot of recs in this morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Michelle, so. Yes. So look, you, if anyone, yeah, especially you can make a note if you're interested in working for Keely or Michelle. <laughs> and all the panelists and myself and Emma, uh, we're all on LinkedIn and we've all agreed that you are welcome to LinkedIn check out our profiles, see our career trajectories. There's a lot longer than mine so far. 
and uh, you can add us, message us, uh, whatever you need there. We can thank all the panelists uh, for your time. Thank you so much uh, for answering all your questions and your advice. I think Shira, uh, Kurland, Meteor Montag, and I have all volunteered to stay on an extra 15 minutes if anyone wants to network with alumni. Uh, they just recently finished. I am only two years out of YU. We have been in your positions. We are happy to uh, talk about whatever it is that you want to, if you want to stick around. But if not, thank you for joining. And thank you, Emma, for helping organize. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, take care. Thank you.